Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive reading of the Psalm, Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And, and may his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known on earth. Your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let, Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples of the heavenly and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. <laughs>
provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text is from the Gospel lesson, verse 19. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your fellow redeemer. In a way, it is somewhat misleading that this lesson of Jesus healing the ten lepers is used as a Thanksgiving Day lesson. Because even though the one leper does return and give thanks to Jesus for the healing, this text really is not so much about giving thanks. That one leper was not healed because he returned and gave thanks. He was healed before he gave thanks. The other nine unthankful lepers, they were all healed too. What this lesson is really about is the grace and mercy of Christ. This one leper who returned to give thanks did more than give thanks. Luke says the man also glorified God and he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet. Those acts are acts of worship. This man came back giving God all the credit for the healing and worshiping Jesus as his Savior. The healing that happened to this one out of the ten ran a whole lot deeper than just fixing the man's leprosy. The eyes of his faith were opened in the process. He now saw Christ as his soul's salvation. So he was healed in his soul. When Jesus says to the man, arise, go your way, your faith has made you well, I don't think Jesus even is talking about his leprosy anymore at that point. The man was healed of that leprosy before faith was given to him. Jesus is now looking into his heart and sees the Holy Spirit present there and sees faith in Christ as his Savior and as the Messiah glowing within the man. So when Jesus says, your faith has made you well, Jesus means he has now been made well with God. He was healed of the disease of his unbelief. And as a Samaritan, this guy would have had all kinds of mixed up religious thoughts about God. But here, before Jesus, God corrected all that spiritual chaos. And God gave him the necessary understanding in Christ as his Savior. So he was healed of the false teaching, healed of his false faith, and now given a new healthy relationship with God through his Son. The other nine lepers... They were only healed in their bodies. Now, I think what we can take away from this story for our Thanksgiving Day today is that just Thanksgiving is not enough. Of course, we should give thanks to God for the richness of our lives, for all the blessings we enjoy. We should be thankful for family and friends and homes clothes on our back. We have more comforts than any other people in the history of the world have ever had. We have a list of blessings so long we couldn't even sit down and write it all out. But just coming here today and saying thank you is not enough if it is not coupled with a faith that returns to Christ for his ongoing grace and salvation. You know, even if this Samaritan had not been healed of his leprosy, even if he had only been given this new view of Christ as his Savior and Redeemer, Jesus said to the man, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Because the only being well that matters is being made well with God. Being reconciled to God. So that all of our failings and our disobediences aren't held against us in the court of heaven. That's what this man was given. 
And that alone was enough for this man to spend the rest of his life in thanksgiving to God. Now the truth is that though this man's life was now made easier because his leprosy had been taken away from him, he was still going to have to face what all of us face, growing old, wearing down, and eventually dying. Just like the other nine who were healed, all ten of these men would lose their health again. All ten of them would be stripped by the grave of everything on this earth that they loved. And for the nine who had no Savior in their lives, the few years of healthy living that Jesus gave them meant nothing as far as forever was concerned. All it meant was Jesus kept them out of hell for a few years longer. Only the one who glorified God, only the one who worshipped Jesus as his Savior and recognized in Christ the ongoing source of his forgiveness and reconciliation with God. Only he understood what true thankfulness was about. Today, we live in a country that's very thankful. And today, people of all different faiths, even people of no faith at all, are going to engage in the same kind of thankful activities that we all do. They'll gather with family and friends. They'll talk about how thankful they are for all the things in their lives. But that kind of thanksgiving isn't enough. We learn from the one leper that true thanksgiving is rooted only in the person of Jesus. Ours today is a thanks tied upon his act of reconciling our broken lives with the Heavenly Father despite all the personal failings he sees within us. Today, gathered here, we do more than thank God. We worship our gracious God and Savior. We thank him for having found us among so many other people in this world and singling us out to give us his constant love and, and salvation. You know, when you think about it, we really are not better than these lepers. We are all of our own right spiritual lepers and Samaritans. We are all by nature a people set against God who rebel against him throughout our lives, but knowing we're like that, Jesus still chose to claim us. Who are we that God should be mindful of us? And yet he is. So today, we thank God for a love that exceeds all human explanation. And more than thank, we're here today still as beggars and lepers in need of this deep inner healing that the Savior gives. We come here today knowing that this one is here precisely to heal us. And that he's willing and ready and capable of doing it. In fact, that he has accomplished everything needed for us to be truly healed in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. The love Jesus has for us is never in doubt. It doesn't depend on how we're feeling in the spur of the moment, what our mood might be, how strong or weak we are spiritually. Jesus has bound his love to us in real things that will never change, that are not dependent on what we bring to the table. Jesus has bound his grace to us in his word. The marvelous thing about his word is that wherever it is proclaimed in its truth and purity, there is Christ, and there is his grace and healing. And our God has bound that grace to his sacraments so that every baptism and at every sip of wine at the communion rail and every, ra every wafer, Christ is there to forgive, to heal, to restore us to God. In fact, these are the only treasures that we will ever have in this life that will not be stripped away from us by the grave. 
everything else we're thankful for today, it will all fall away from us at death. All we have ever worked for in life is all going to be somebody else's possession someday. And not a one of us here is going to escape that. But as we come here together as God's church, we have more to be thankful for than just our stuff. Today, we have an eternal Savior present among us again to give us that one healing that is needful for our eternal life. Today, we are purified in the forgiveness of our sins and a place is prepared for us in God's eternal kingdom. So thanks be to Christ for the eternal blessings he gives. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by making confession of our saving faith with the Nicene Creed on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us him and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. And we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the kindness and mercy that you have showered upon us, your beloved children, through your Son. You continually feed, clothe, guard, and protect us, and in countless ways amply provide for our physical well-being. But your choicest blessings are those that have secured our everlasting salvation. How gracious you are to forgive the many sins we daily commit. And we thank you for sending your Son, who made full payment for all of them. Heavenly Father, continue to open your hand and satisfy the true needs of our souls. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may walk in the way of your commandments, and that our bodies themselves might become living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you. Gracious God, you never act in our lives except when you act in love. And even when we feel bitterness and pain, it is your love that's at work preparing us for your eternal life. We thank you that you have taken your child, Jim Wilmore, out of his suffering and brought him into your eternal kingdom. Ease now the sufferings of his family and let them be built up in faith as they look to your word of life to comfort them. All of our prayers we offer up in the name of Jesus, our living Redeemer and Savior. Amen.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.